Why do we use anatomical terminology? Well, as healthcare workers, and for me, especially as a physical therapist, we use anatomical terminology all the time to talk about different movements and different locations that's located along the body. Anatomical terminology is utilized so that we can locate specifically what's on someone's body or the location of where they're talking about. For example, if I said my chest hurts right here, um, I can be thinking about, if I'm reading my chest hurts, I can be thinking about the left, the right, up, down, like where on the chest, right? So we have specific anatomical terminologies that we're gonna be covering in this video that can help you be more precise as to how to medically locate the source of pain or whatever uh, place you're trying to give directions for. Hey you guys, what's going on? My name is Dr. Lift for Change, Justin Lee, physical therapist. I help physical therapy students become high performers and I help students get into and accepted into physical therapy school. So if any of that resonates with you, feel free to subscribe and hit those notifications so you don't miss a video when it drops. All right, so we got a lot to cover today, but you guys, I'm using a lot of technology here and my creativity so that you can have a better understanding of what's these anatomical positions and terminologies. Cause I remember when I was in school, I was like, I didn't understand superior, inferior, anterior, posterior, all of that stuff. It just didn't make sense to me. So I hope this video will really help reiterate and redefine your understanding of these anatomical terminologies. So first things first, anytime we're referring to someone one's body, we always want to get into the anatomical position. So I'm going to show you what that's like right here. So right here is the anatomical position. Notice that my feet are shoulder width apart and my feet are nice and flat. I know you can't see that, but um, I'm looking straight forward and my palms are up and my thumbs are pointed out. You will always be referring to this position as an anatomical position. So whenever you use terminologies, you're always going to be referring back to this position. So let's go ahead and look a little bit more intricately and describe the different terminologies. All right, so we're going to be annotating on the iPad here because I think it's uh, a little easier to understand more visually what's going on, right? Now, first things first, the first thing we want to talk about is understanding the difference between your right and your left. Now, I know this might seem easy. You're like, oh, my right is my right, my left is my left, but you'd be surprised how often clinicians, including myself, make mistakes on rights and lefts, right? If I'm facing you and what seems to be on my left is actually your right. Does that make sense? And now, if I have you go on your back, on your stomach, turned around, you kind of lose which one it is. <laughs> so I always like to uh, put my hand on the patient on whatever limb or whatever side I'm working on. It's like, it, was it this side? Just to confirm, because sometimes um, I do mess that up. <laughs> anyway, so determining your right and your left is always in the perspective of the patient or the client. So when we look in this picture here, this is gonna be the right side because this is the patient or the client's right side. And then this side is going to be the left, okay? And I want you to pay attention because I have that ring on that left side. So obviously you know it is my left side. But not everyone's gonna have a ring, so you won't be able to determine that, okay? So when I mention that, hey, you know, um, I'm having some kind of itchiness or something's happening on my chest, when I mentioned that it was right here, now we're gonna say, well, on the chest, was it the right or the left side? And now you can determine it was on the right side. Cool? So that is left and right. Next, we're gonna be moving on to different anatomical directions, right? Now, this is the fun stuff because once you have direction, now we have some sort of movement and that's where kinesiology and all that woo, goody goody stuff gets me going. <laughs> All right, so first things first, we're gonna be talking about the anterior and posterior directions. Now by definition, anterior means front of the body and posterior means back of the body. Now I have a picture of me on the side right here. Now if you can imagine, if I just drew a line straight down the middle of my body, then anything in front of that would be considered anterior 
and anything behind that will be considered posterior. Oops, posterior there, right? So you can say that my nipple is anterior compared to my ear. Does that make sense? Or you can say that my apex of my buttock is more posterior than my ear. All right. So anterior is going to be in front right here and posterior, I keep writing an R, posterior is going to be behind com comparing to the um, front and back of a person, not side to side. So now if we change people and then we change the view to side to side, now what we have is looking is superior and inferior and it will go to medial and lateral. We're going to do that next, okay? So superior and inferior. Superior means above or towards the head. So anything above and towards the head. And inferior means the opposite, right? You're inferior to me. You're superior to me. You talk highly of your superiors, right? So inferior means towards the feet um, or um, down below, okay? So when mentioning superior and inferior, you can say, hey, the nose is superior to what's here? The thigh, right? Or the opposite, right? We can say the knee is inferior to the sternum. Right, so superior and inferior. Now, when we move on to what I mentioned, medial and lateral, we have to consider what we call a midline. Ooh, let me use a different color here, okay? A midline. Now, this midline, let me draw a little bit straighter, is what we call right in the middle. Okay, it bisects us left to right. Now, if anything is further away from the midline, that's what we call lateral. And anything closer to the midline is medial, okay? So, here's an example. We have our nipple is more medial to our AC process, right? Our uh, acromioclavicular process here, or AC joint, sorry. Um, or you can say the opposite. The AC joint is more lateral compared to the nipple line. Right, so medial and lateral. Now, last thing I do want to mention here, which I think is going to be super important, is talking about proximal and distal. Now, what's important to understand is proximal and distal can only be used in reference to one limb. Okay, one limb. It can be any of the limbs, but only one of them. It cannot be used to describe the trunk. So only your arms or your legs, those are limbs. For example, we're gonna be using the limb of my right hand. If I have a cut, right? If I have a cut right here, I can say, look, I or the patient has a cut two inches, two inches proximal to the antecubital fossa. That means you have the antecubital fossa, which is right here, two inches above or two, two inches uh, more proximal to the antecubital fossa. You can describe it like that. You can describe it like, okay, we want to move, when we describe it in physical therapy, we're trying to move the distal segment of the right limb. So whenever you have like, let's say, um, uh, you're doing some bicep curls, right? We want to talk about moving the distal segment, which is the forearms, versus doing a curl by moving the proximal segment, which is your humerus. Things like that. So proximal and distal is going to be for the limb only, right? And nothing on the trunk. Okay, <clears throat> so check this out, you guys. This is like super, 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 super cool. So just in case you didn't learn this yet, I have another visual for you. We're gonna go VR in learning more about these terms and I'll go through them pretty quickly, but I think it'll definitely help you have a good understanding of what's going on. But uh, we're gonna use back, go back to my iPad for that. So um, here we go.
Okay, so we have our little human here, three-dimensional, which is awesome. So we're going to talk about anterior and posterior first, right? Because that's what we first mentioned. Now remember, we're trying to when we get into bisecting the body, we go straight down the middle. And when we do that, then whatever is anterior, right? Whatever is anterior up front compared to the midline and the back would be more posterior, right? Does that make sense? So um, you definitely want to make sure that you're using these anatomical directions correctly. Now if we go back here, let me minimize him or her, just him a little bit here. Now if we look, right, we can be talking superior and inferior. So the head is more superior than the pelvis or the pelvis is more inferior to than the rib cage. Pretty simple, right? Now of course we draw that midline all the way down, straight down the middle. And then if you have whatever is more on the outside, then that's going to be lateral. Whatever and more towards the midline is going to be medial, right? The intercostal, the intercostals are going to be more medial than the humerus, the arm bone, right? Things like that. So just like we discussed in that area. And then lastly, proximal and distal, right? So the kneecap is going to be more proximal than the feet, right? Or the feet are more distal than the hip. So um, I hope that really helps y'all. All right, so technology, what a crazy, crazy thing, right? <laughs> if you like this video, if you were entertained by it, please give this a like. If you have any concerns or comments or just any questions regarding physical therapy or kinesiology, I'd love to hear it. Please comment below. And, or if you have any friends who's interested in this subject, please share this video with them. I hope this video helped inspire you to look into the different types of medical terminologies and anatomical terminologies so that you can better describe where you're maybe feeling pain or where you're trying to describe the location of something. I encourage you, especially if you're on the path to physical therapy, to do these things because you're going to have to talk like this when you start working as a physical therapist. Oh, the distal, the distal part of the forearm is actually where they feel the most stress versus the proximal part of the forearm, you know, things like that. So uh, definitely practice that. If you're interested in getting into PT school, I help coach and help get students get accepted into physical therapy school. That's one of the services that I provide. And there are so many students that have gotten in that needed my help with the interview process. I coached them through that and they got accepted into their PT program. So if that interests you, I do have an online course to teach you everything you need to know to get accepted into PT school. I'll link that below. And if you need any further one-on-one, -on -one, cause maybe your story is a little bit more unconventional, then feel free to email me and let's set up that one-on-one -on -one so we can talk about your application. Guys, I'm so stoked. I'm still stoked to do more videos like this about kinesiology and just educating y'all. So if you have any, uh, if you wanna hype me up and support me throughout this process and tell me the videos are good or bad or give me some constructive criticism, I'd really appreciate that. All right, stay lifting, stay aloha. God bless. Have a great one, you guys.